We made a big step towards creating a responsive site already by adding relative sizes to achieve a fluid layout. Also we discovered some of the drawbacks too, such as the content squashing up and causing layout changes. This also works other way too. If content is stretched too far on larger monitors, the content will become distorted and it won't look great. This is where media queries come into play. Media queries allow us to change layout based on the user's device size, orientation or resolution, to name just a few. For example, we could have CSS rules for screens under 600 pixels wide, then another set of CSS rules for anything over 600 pixels. Just like we see here, if we take a look at this slide, we could set the product to be the full width of the container for one screen size, and then under a certain screen size, we could also set the containers to be full width too, and then stacked on top of each other. If we go back over to our style sheet, and then go down to the very bottom, we can use a media query with the at media rule. So just under the table row, we can add at media, then open up a set of brackets, and then the curly braces, just like we did with the other CSS values. Here we can also declare when we want this media query to apply, such as a minimum width. So let's set the minimum width to be 600 pixels. Then inside of these curly braces, we can go ahead and add CSS rules, just like we did before. So let's say a list item, let's set the color to be red. So once the minimum width of the screen reaches 600 pixels and above, the list items will then change to be red. So let's save that and over to the browser. So these are our list items here. If we go down to the smaller screen size, we have the normal dark color. And then once we get over 600 pixels, they all change red. There is some available browser plugins to show the width of the browser when we stretch it, or in Chrome, we can go to right click and inspect. And if we just drop this down here, once we start stretching the browser, we can see in the top right hand corner, we have the viewport size. So again, if we go down to below 600 pixels, the color goes back to normal. And then over 600, we have the red color inside the media query. There's also some different media types too, which we can target. So let's close down these developer tools. For example, we can add the print type to only apply styles when printing. If we wanted the text to be green when printing for whatever reason, we would do it like this. So at media, just like we did before. And then we say print and then open up the braces. So let's target the body section and set the color of the fonts to be green. Save and then over to the browser. And then to see this, we need to go into the print view. So I'm going to press command or control P to open up the print preview. And then scroll down. We can see in this print view that all the text has been changed to green because we targeted print. Or instead of this, we could change print to be screen. Just like that. And this will only target screens such as phones, tablets, and computers. If we save and now refresh, and close this down, refresh. Now the green body color only applies to the screens. We can test this by opening up the print preview once again, and then scroll down. And now we don't see any of the green colors because this is only applying to the screen. There are other types too. So let's close this down and do a quick Google search. So CSS media queries. And then I'm going to go to the W free schools version. So the at media rule. And then if we scroll down to the media types, so which is just here, here we see all the different media types which we can target. We've already used print and screen already, but as you can see, there is a few more. The type can also be changed for speech or screen readers, which read out of the screen. And these are often used for visually impaired people. Or we can set all 
to always apply the same CSS style rules for all types of media. Scrolling further down to the media features, here is a list of features which will also trigger the media query. We've already looked at the minimum width, and if we scroll down, we can see that just here. But as you can see here, there are lots more, such as the device resolution, the device height, and many more. These can also be combined to make even more complex media queries using AND. So back over to our CSS file. Let's remove this second media query. And then we can use AND to combine two or more queries. And then let's go for the maximum width. And let's say 700 pixels. So now the styles will only apply between the minimum width of 600 and the maximum width of 700 pixels. So anything else will be back to the default styles above. Back over to our text store and then refresh. So we're currently above 700 pixels, so we get the default color. Now if we scroll down, and once we get to 700 pixels, which is just here, we see the color of red apply. And then if we go down even further to below 600 pixels, we're then back to the default colors. When this change of styling occurs using a media query, this is what is called a breakpoint. And you may frequently hear this word when dealing with responsive layouts. It may be tempting to design these breakpoints to occur to suit popular phone or tablet sizes. However, because we need our design to look good on all size devices, it's often a good idea to start with the browser really narrow and then apply our general CSS styling then stretch the browser even wider and only apply a media query to change layout when our design begins to look stretched or not quite right. And again, like we mentioned before, there is some browser plugins which we can search for to show the screen size, or we can go into the developer tools and we can begin to see the width of the screen when our design starts to look stretched. We can then take these sizes and apply these to our media query. Finally, along with and, which we've used just here, there is also not and only, which are known as logical operators to make even more complex media queries. So as well as this size here, if we only wanted this to apply to screens, we could say only screen, and then also target these sizes too. So this just leaves us with the not keyword. Let's simplify this by cutting out the minimum and maximum widths. So let's take out these from before. And then we can change this to be not screen. Changing this value to not means the styles will apply to media queries, except the screen. So save, and then refresh. So now we are viewing this on the screen, the media query, color of red, does not apply. But if we go into the print preview, which of course is not a screen, we now see this red color is applied. So there we go, so this is a first look at media queries. As we've seen on the W3 Schools website, there are lots of options and variants we can use, but a lot of them we may never have to use too often. I'm now going to delete this demo media query, which we just added in, but we'll come back to them in the next video to change layouts for different size devices.